We are going to start with uh, with LSU basketball. Uh, they go on the road to Vanderbilt and lose 66-75. And I, I did my podcast this morning. Generally speaking, in my podcast, I've got my notes. I've got some play-by-play stuff, some stats, some talking points, things I want to get to. Um, pretty much purpose. I mean, I could have done that again th- th- this morning, but pretty much purposely, I just went in there and started talking for 15 minutes. No stats, no, just right from the hip. And essentially, my message is, this team's not very good, and they're hurt, and they're not getting better. They're getting worse, and right now they're not an NCAA tournament team. And that's kind of the message we'll talk about this game and, and a lot of that moving forward. But your overarching thought as you have watched in the last month. Yeah, um, it's just tough. I didn't think uh, with Pinson out of the lineup that the offense would look the way it has, but um, it, it's taken a, a real, real step back. And I think for me, just those you let every team just get out to such hot starts against you, just dig too big of a hole for yourself. And I, I didn't think going into Vanderbilt they would be up by you know eighteen, almost twenty points uh, going into halftime. But um, a lot of those times, you, you're not getting good looks at the goal. Um, there were some times out, out out there in the game where there were no point guards on the floor, so you got guys who really aren't uh, real dribblers trying to create offense, trying to do things, and, and for other teams it's just easy. And I, I think for me, um, I, I want to see him you know, do some other stuff other than the switching defense at this point. Uh, I think I've seen it. Uh, I think other teams are adjusting to it. I, I wouldn't mind if I saw a little zone here, maybe fight through some screens. Um, you got to change something because uh, what you're doing right now, you, you're putting all that full court pressure on people. Guys are getting tired. You got to keep rotating guys. It's just it's just not working right now. So um, this team is, you know, you like I said a couple weeks ago, you beat Kentucky, you beat Tennessee, you beat Florida. You're feeling really good about yourself. And it's just took a turn for the, to the absolute worst. So uh, I wish I could say, hey, this guy gets healthy, that guy gets healthy, we'll be fine. But I think some of this stuff is going to have to be a change in strategy and guys are going to have to knock down some shots. So at this point, um, we'll just kind of start checking some boxes. Do they shoot the three well? Do they finish at the rim well? No. Do they get to the free throw line? No. Do they have a guy they can go to to get a bucket? No. That's pretty much the offense. You gave me a bunch of no's. Defensively, uh, are they turning people over to an, an incredible clip? No. Are they stopping teams from getting to the basket? Nope. Are they fouling too much? Yes. <laughs> uh, are they holding teams well under their average like they were for the first three months? No, they're not. Do they rebound well? Nope. There's nothing this team is doing well now. Nothing. And I'm the only thing they do well is get behind 20 and then play from that point. They'll cut it to four, inevitably, but they can't finish. So it would probably be better radio, probably get more eyeballs, and you'd probably get a better reaction if I came on here and ranted and raved and said, this team is not good. They haven't been good since the start of the season. They don't have any offensive weapons. The defense is in shambles. They're done. They can't get any. The season's over. Like that would sound cool, and people could get on there and go, "Oh, that's." A, oh, I mean, Hunt's, Hunt was on on one today, but <laughs> you're just not going to get that from me. Yeah. Now, I've had, I've gone as far as I'm willing to go. They're playing terribly. They're losing to bad teams. Ole Miss and Vanderbilt aren't good. Vanderbilt had three SEC wins, and two of them were against Georgia. They're they're not good. And Ole Miss isn't good. And Ole Miss went back and scored in the 50s on Saturday, if you noticed, after going 14 of 16 from LSU and 7 of 8 from the floor. So I've gone as far as I'm going to go. They're not good right now. They're losing to bad teams, and I don't think they're going to make the NCAA tournament. They could. They can. You could get a little healthier, and you can play a lot better. And in this sport, that can happen. And if that irritates you to hear me say that because you're just you're a homer, I mean, no, it's just the truth. Plenty of teams have awful stretches and come back and play good basketball. Um, that's right now. LSU is worse than that. They're hurt. They're short on depth, and they're challenged on both ends of the floor. Um, I don't know that it's going to get any better. Now, you were talking about changing the defense. I would have liked to see that in the first half. In the first half, they are gouging you and absolutely ripping through you at every corner. Pippen is dishing it out. He's got six assists in the first half. They scored 43 points, shot 49% from the floor, got to the foul line. Like that, you couldn't, you you weren't doing anything defensively and they just stuck with it. I I realize that's your identity. People have been talking all, like they don't have an identity. They do have an identity. The identity was the switching defense that really makes things difficult on people and they do enough on offense. Like that was the identity. 
it's fractured now. Yeah, it, it definitely is. And if someone would have told me going into this game, uh, Scotty Pippen Jr. would go two for 12 from the field. He'd go 0 for 6 from 3. I would have been licking my chops like, oh, man, we're about to have a day up in Nashville right now because that's their best score. He really sets everything up. But you allowed him to get other guys going. You allowed him to, you know, get some guys rhythm and let some guys knock down some outside shots. You saw Chapman have one of the best games uh, he had. You saw Stude have a great day. Um, it, it was just bad for me. I, I think for those just uh, wide open jump shots, and that's what happens when you play that switching defense. Guys are going to get matched up on mismatches, and then now you're going to be rotating, and guys are finding rhythm. So um, I, I see other teams do this. LSU, I see them, you know, run some zone on us. I see them mix things up. It just you got to keep people on your toes when you know exactly what you're going to get for a full game. Uh, these are SEC athletes, man. These are SEC coaches. Um, they're going to make adjustments. You can't just press all game and think guys aren't going to break your press down. You can't just switch everything and think they're not going to be hitting you on back door cuts. I think that's what they got a lot of easy layups at the goal um, early on in that game, get guys rhythm, get the lead bigger. And then it, just like like we've seen time and time and time again with this team, uh, you dig yourself that big hole, then you have to play perfect to try to finish the game and just to give yourself a chance. And uh, if you want to have the aspirations of this team, uh, what they thought they could do and making a deep tournament run, can't play that type of basketball. It's going to get you killed, and that's what we've been watching this team do. In the first half of this game, LSU scored 25 points. That's putrid on its own. But the way they got there is even worse. Uh, they turned the ball over. This is the first half. Turned the ball over nine times. They had two assists, and both assists were from Justice Williams. The only guy who shot reasonably efficiently from the floor was Efton Reed, who was three out of four. You were one of eight from three. Turned it over nine times. It's just a mess on offense, and I, I do truly believe that if Xavier Pinson was healthy for this stretch, they would play better on offense. Mm -hmm. He would not fix this, and they would still have lost some games along the way. But him not being out there has crippled this team offensively, and unless you get a flamethrower from from Days or Murray, you know Gaines got hot for with three straight against against Alabama and Tuscaloosa. There's just nothing they can go to consistently, and. You know, there are those that say they don't run anything. They don't. That, that's not true. If you just watch the game, they get into these horn sets. They run some high ball screens. They do some dribble handoff. They run pin down screens away. It, it just doesn't work. It's not very good. And I think they were obviously bailed out um, last two years because they had elite scores on the floor at all times. And and Skylar Mays, Javante Smart, Cam Thomas, Trenton Watford. And days shooting it when when he got his chance, but you had guys out there that could just go get it, and they don't have that on this team anywhere. And without that, they're unable to to get anything done. Yeah, they are, and I, I think you go into that game on the road and you go three for fourteen from three, twenty one percent. It's easy for the defense. Now you're packing the paint. Um, you don't have to go over on pick and rolls. Uh, it, it just makes it their job just night and day much better on the defensive side. So um, when you don't have guys that put pressure on you like they were doing to us, and that's how they were getting some of those backdoor cuts, that's our guy, guys were knocking down uh, shots from the outside, just makes your offense flow way smoother. Now you can pump fake and get guys off their feet and, and, and dribble and force rotations and get better looks. Uh, we can't do that on the other side. You can't find a guy. I saw Efton a couple times uh, get some deep post position, which I've been begging for all yeah. season. But they kind of got away from it. I would have loved to see him continue to try to attack down there, continue to try to get some close looks at the basket and really put pressure on them, get them in some foul trouble. Um, you don't do that. So it's just uh, for Coach Wade, I think, just finding some sort of consistency on the offensive end. I don't know what it is at this point. You know you're probably not going to be knocking down threes. Uh, I don't know if you got to get a guy going to the basket. I don't know what it is. But uh, just watching what they've been doing on the offensive side, uh, things are going to continue to trend this way. And I thought it'd be better by now. I thought they'd figure some things out. But – it's just been really tough to watch that uh, team play basketball on the offensive end. Look, I was going to switch over and talk about something else, but there's still so much to unpack here with this game and, and not really this game. I want to talk about the effort and, and what you see and what you expect moving forward. I want to talk about Will Wade and and some of his you know things, the criticisms, what's valid, what's not in my eyes. It's just my opinion. Um, and, and, and where this team moves going forward, um, assuming that they do get reasonably healthy down the stretch. Thanks so much for watching Hunt Hill on YouTube. Now do us a favor. Hit the red subscribe button below and throw us a like. We'll see you next time.